Hello friends, welcome all in the first part of JWE mains 10th January 2019 shift to paper solution. In last sessions of this paper solution, we completed 10th January 2019 shift one paper solution, and now we'll start with the paper solution of shift two. And in that, we'll start with the first question. So first question has that let Z is a complex number given in terms of root 3 by 2 plus i by 2 raised to 5 plus root 3 by 2 minus i by 2 raised to 5 and if real part of z and imaginary part of z are given to you then we have to find out that which is the possible option in this now as you just observe this term it's like a plus b raised to n plus a minus b raised to n it's like the binomial theorem right and we all know that this has direct answer equals to two times all the uh, terms with odd value of r will be cancelled in it. So we can start like this that a raised to n plus nc to a raised to n minus 2b square plus nc4 a raised to n minus 4b raised to 4 plus dot up to the last term. Right. So if I go with this condition and if I apply the same thing over here, then I can directly write down z as 2 times it's 5c0 a will be root 3 by 2. So root 3 by 2 raised to 5 and i by 2 raised to 0 plus 5c2 root 3 by 2 raised to 3 and i by 2 whole square and the last one 5c4 root 3 by 2 raised to 1 and i by 2 raised to 4. So hope you all understand by direct using the above condition and as we can expand it's 5c01 root 3 raised to 5 that is 9 root 3 by 32 i by 2 raised to 0 that is 1 plus 5c2 5c2 will be 5 into 4 by 2 that is 10 root 3 that is 3 root 3 by 8 i by i square that is minus 1 by 4 plus 5c4 into that is 5 root 3 by 2 i raised to 4 that is 1 by 16. So as we can further give the expansion to it, it will be 9 root 3 by 32 plus, uh, sorry, minus 30 root 3 by 32 and plus 5 root 3 by 32. So it's z equals 2 into 9 plus 5 9 plus 5 14 14 minus 30 <clears throat> that is minus 60 root 3 by 2 sorry by 32 <clears throat> equals further will be z equals to minus root 3 so we can surely say that real part of z is equals to minus root 3 which is less than 0 and imaginary part of z equals to 0 and let's check the above options given options that real part of z greater than 0 which is not possible real part of z less than 0 which is correct but with that the imaginary part is different so this cannot be possible real part of z is equals to minus 3 but as we get minus root 3 so c is also cancelled so D is your answer that imaginary part equals to zero. Okay. Now, if you know the direct condition of this I raised to zero, I raised to square and I raised to four, I can directly write down from this step only that imaginary part of Z must be zero. That will be the direct answer without doing any kind of expansion. We can say to it. Okay. So it will conserve your less time. It's a direct answer if you can possible, but we need to process this just because if if in case they're given the answer options like real part of z less zero and imaginary part of z equals to zero then that can be the possible value answer okay so if you can understand it it's quite easy to solve such question then after the second question is depends on the binomial theorem only the positive value of lambda for which the coefficient of x square in the expansion x square into root x plus lambda upon x square raised to 10 is a 720 
Now I give you two options. First, either you can multiply this x square inside the bracket and whatever term we'll get, we're going to find out the coefficient of x square in it. But if not, then it's already the term x square. So what we'll do, let us find out the constant term in this x function because when you multiply constant term with x square, it will become directly the coefficient, right? So we're not going to multiply x square inside the bracket. We'll just find out the constant term of this bracket and then it will automatically becomes the cofactor coefficient of x square, okay? So here, from for this particular bracket, a is equals to root x, b is equals to lambda upon x square and n equals to 10. So the general equation we have is ncr a raised to n minus r b raised to r from this equation we can say that 10 cr a that is root x raised to 10 minus r and lambda upon x square raised to r so we can get the terms with coefficient with base x together so i can say that it's x raised to 10 minus r by 2 it's lambda raised to r and x raised to minus 2 r but obvious because it's in denominator so i have to take it in the numerator so therefore it will be tr plus 1 equals 10 cr lambda is to r and now if i take the terms of x together it will be 10 minus r by 2 minus 2 r now for <coughs> constant term for constant term power of x must be 0 so therefore, we can say that 10 minus r by 2 minus 2r equals to 0. So it will be 10 minus r equals to 4r and 10 equals to 5r. So we'll get r equals to 2. So as you put r equals 2, you will find that this term will become a constant. Okay. And then therefore, for r equals to 0, we can say that coefficient of x square equals to 720 given to you and therefore let's put 10 and uh, r equals 2 in this equation so it will be 10 c 2 lambda raised to 2 and x will be automatically becomes a power 0 right and as we already discussed that once you take the constant term of this bracket that term will be multiplied with x squared to get the coefficient itself right so which is equals to 720 so therefore 10 c2 that is 10 into 9 by 2 into lambda square equals to 720. So it will be 10 into 9. So lambda square will be 720 into 2 upon 10 into 9. So it's 10 cancel 8. So it will be lambda square equals to 16 and lambda equals plus or minus 4. So according to the condition, it's a positive value. So answer will be b right now i'll just give you one information that you find the similar kind of questions regularly frequently asking in the jw examinations right so you have to be quite careful for this kind of questions it's purely based on the textbook nothing else just you need to understand the basic general equation of a binomial expansion right the next question we have a question from the trigonometry where one of the condition is given to us that cos pi by 2 square the question is like cos let me find consider this as x so cos pi by 2 square dot cos pi by 2 cube dot up to cos pi by 2 raised to 10 into sine pi by 2 raised to 10 so you want this answer now let me take one condition right let me take a simple general information regarding this type of question right let me take only two terms for x equals cos pi by 2 square and cos pi by 2 cube okay with the sine pi by 2 cube i'm just taking this for the understanding right what i will get or if don't then let's just directly multiply with it and divide with it no need to go with this it will become quite confusing but just keep a point in your mind whenever we have such kind of question always go with the multiplication and division with sign okay so what i will do in this first of all i will do i'll take all the terms uh, from the uh, vice versa case that i will write down like this that sine pi by 2 raised to 10 into cos pi by 2 raised to 10 
then after it will be cos pi by 2 raised to 9 then cos pi by 2 raised to 8 dot up to the last term will be cos pi by 2 square i just write down all those terms all the given terms in the vice versa condition now what i will do i will just multiply and divide with 2 in the first two terms only so it will be 2 sine pi by 2 raised to 10 dot cos pi by 2 raised to 10 and remaining terms are as it is now as you understand 2 sin theta cos theta will become the equation of sin 2 theta, right? So it will become sin 2 into pi by 2 raised to 10. So it will become sin pi by 2 raised to 9. With it, already we have cos pi by 2 raised to 9 dot cos pi by 2 raised to 8 up to cos pi by 2 square. So hope you understand it. So now further, just check this two terms. So what we'll do in this? We'll again divide and multiply with 2. So when I again divide and multiply with 2, so it will become 2 square with 2 sine pi by 2 raised to 9 cos pi by 2 raised to 9 with it cos pi by 2 raised to 8 cos pi by 2 raised to 7 up to cos pi by 2 square. That will be the last term. So it is equals to 1 by 2 square cos pi by it will again become the equation of 2 sin theta cos theta that is sin 2 theta and it's 2 pi by 2 raised to 8 into cos sorry sin pi by 2 raised to 8 into cos pi by 2 raised to 8 along with pi by 2 raised to 7 dot up to the last term cos pi by 2 square now you just have to be quite uh, directly understand the term that if it is 10 power then when you divide 2 you will get 9 then 2 square will give you 8 now just further consider now when i take 2 cube 1 by 1 huh? for 2 cube we'll get 2 raised to 7 power then for 2 raised to 4 that means again we'll multiply and divide with 2 we'll get 2 raised to 6 power then we'll multiply with 2 again so you will get 2 raised to 5 when you again multiply with 2 you will get 2 raised to 4 when you again multiply with 2, you will get 2 raised to 3. And then when you again multiply with 2, you will get 2 square. Hope you understand. So, if I directly write down this answer and by using such pattern, what you observed that when you have 2 raised to the power 8, so by this, when you have 2 to the power 8, will get sine pi by 2 square dot cos pi by 2 square and the last step will be again multiply and divide with 2 what we'll get now we'll get 1 by 2 raised to 9 it's sine pi by 2 only and sine pi by 2 1 which is 5 1 2 is your answer right so hope you understand this point right that it's kindly uh, it's mainly based on a kind of a repeated question repeated means what you find some cyclic process you find some periodic condition also right you find some direct connections okay so hope you understand this point moving with the next question we have question based on integration so in that the question is the value of i equals minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 dx upon integer of x plus integer of sine x plus 4 dx. Okay. So in that, let us first of all uh, divide this interval between minus pi by 2 to 0 and 0 to pi by 2 because it's an integer part. So we have to separate it, right? Because we know that in between minus pi by 2 to x less than 0, in between minus pi by 2 to 0, basically your answer of sin x will be sin x. But before that, let us multiply, let us divide this term again in the 4 part that minus pi by 2 less than or equals to x less than minus 1, then minus 1 less than x less than 0. 
zero less than or equals to x. Let us first talk about this two terms only. Now it will be minus pi by two to minus one integer x is equals to minus two, and integer of sine x in between minus pi by two to minus one only. Huh? <coughs> integer of sine x will become minus one. Okay. Similarly, between minus one to zero, integer of x has answer minus one, and integer of sine x has again answer minus one itself. So, hope you all clear with it. Similarly, in further consideration, zero less or equals to x less than one in that integer x equals to zero, and integer of sine x is equals to also zero, and in second condition, one less or equals to x. Less than pi by two in that integer of x has answer one, whereas integer of sine x has answer zero. Hope you all understand these three four criteria. So now I can say that integer integration will be first of all minus pi by two to minus one plus minus one to zero plus zero to one and then one to pi by two. Okay, and now in all dx of one. When we talk about minus pi by two to zero, it will be minus two, minus one plus four. Then between minus one to zero, it will be minus one minus one plus four. Then zero to one, it will be zero plus zero plus four. And in the last, it will become between one plus zero plus four. So minus pi by two to minus one, it's dx by one. Plus minus one to zero dx by two plus zero to one dx by four and one to pi by two it's dx by five so it will be the direct integration of x from minus pi by two to minus one then half common x minus one to zero plus one by four common x zero to one and one by five common x one to pi by two so now it will be Upper limit minus minus plus lower limit plus half zero plus one plus one by four one minus zero and plus one by five it's pi by two minus one. So now we'll have to do the further expansion of it. So uh, again be like this equals to minus one plus pi by two plus half. Plus one by four, plus pi by ten, and minus one by five. Now, if I check the direct LCM of all, then the LCM will be twenty, right? And I'm going to write down the answer over here. So I can say that it's one by twenty outside. Here I'll get minus twenty plus pi with multiplication of ten plus one by Two that is plus ten, then one by four that is plus five, plus two pi, and minus four. I guess. Wait a minute. Minus four. So it's quite confusing, but still we have to do it. Ten plus two that is. Twelve pi, uh, five minus four one, eleven minus nine by twenty. So now we can take three common. So three by twenty four pi minus three. That will be your answer. Hope you can understand it. It's quite sorry for the uh, space issue, but for this particular two or three terms, it will be compulsory. I have to manage in between this line. So this is your answer. You just check. See the very important and major part you have to understand for this sum is we have to divide the limits in the particular interval like minus pi by two to minus one. Now why the reason? What is the reason that I can only divide between minus pi by two to minus one? Because it's an integer part of x, right? So we have to start from uh, minus pi by two. We have to start from minus pi by two till the second integral portion can appear. So starts with minus pi by two. The integer part will be minus one. Integer point will be minus one. 
then from minus one to up to the next integer point that is zero then again zero to at the next integer point is one and then from one to five by two okay and in between them sign has remained same values right sign has remained same okay next moving with the next question next question has based on probability that if the probability of hitting a target by a shooter in any shot is 1 by 3 so if it is you can hit the target it has probability 1 by 3 and if it is not then it has probability 2 by 3 the minimum number of independent shots at the target required by him so that probability of hitting the target at least once is greater than 5 by 6 so it is very important first of all to understand that from which of the point of probability the question is based so first of all let me tell you that it's a case from Bernoulli's trial right it's a Bernoulli's trial case now someone said that how you can understand it how we can get this point that it's from the Bernoulli's trial so you have to focus on the statement that independent shots that is independent trials here they are talking about and independent trial is only word which is related with the Bernoulli's trial okay so let us take the success as hitting the target or hitting the shot that is p equals to 1 by 3 so automatically q will become 2 by 3 and n we have to find out number of trials we have to find out so here given as that hitting the target <coughs> uh, at least once that is probability of x greater than or equals to 1 is greater than 5 by 6 so this can be p of x equals 1 or p of x equals 2 or p of x equals 3 dot dot up to n trials is greater than not greater than or equals to it's only greater than because they have used the word greater than only so which is greater than 5 by 6 now we can we can surely write like this that's 1 2 3 4 dot up to n number of trials will be equals to 1 minus p of x equals to 0 times success right so it's 1 minus nc 0 success has probability 0 and failure has probability is to n greater than 5 by 6 so now it is 1 minus 2 raised to n by 3 raised to n greater than 5 by 6 so it's 1 minus 1 by 6 greater than 2 by 3 raised to n and so it's 5 by 6 so 1 by 6 greater than 2 raised to n by 3 raised to n okay so we can say that 2 by 3 raised to n less than 1 by 6 so 1 by 1 let's put the values to get that which can be the answer the possible answer for which the minimum value of n whose answer will be less than 1 by 6 that we have to find out so now we have to check that what value of n gives us answer of 2 by 3 less than 1 by 6 now we know that 1 by 6 has answer approximately 1.16666 and 2 by 3 has answer approximately 0.66666 right so uh, it's just a pure calculative question that if i take four power right n equals to four then it will be definitely greater than one by six okay so the minimum value of n for which we'll get answer of two by three to the power n less than one by six has to be that is minimum value of n is equals to five for which 2 by 3 raised to 5 less than 1 by 6 because once you do 2 by 3 less to 4 you will get answer greater than 1 by 6 therefore 3 when put n equals 3 so 2 by 3 cube also will give you answer will give us answer as greater than 1 by 6 right so once you take n equals 5 you find that it will be less than 1 by 6 so for any value greater than 5 also will give us the answer less than 1 by 6 therefore the minimum value of n will be 5 okay now you have done this similar kind of question in the exercise also right you did it 
also. So it's a pure textual question. Going with the next question, it's from the statistics. Let us check the question first. We have that mean and standard deviation of the five observations are 10 and 3. So x bar is given as 10 and standard deviation is given as 3. Then the variance of six observations is equals to dash. Okay, see, so one of the observation is added. Minus 50 is added in the given condition. So let us first of all find out that x bar equals x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 upon 5, which is equals to 10, 50 equals to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5, right? This is the term. So now if I want to find out new mean, new mean, that is x bar dash, which is equals to x1 plus x2 plus x3 dot up to x5 minus 50 upon 6. So we can have 50 minus 50 upon 6. So we can say that new mean is equals to 0. What is required? Because when I want to find out the variance of uh, new observations, I need to first find out the uh, new mean. That is why I did it. Okay. Now, let's talk about the sum of squares of the observations. So here given the standard deviation and standard deviation is a, uh, is a square root of variance. So if I want to find out the variance, so it will be 3 square, x1 square, x2 square dot up to x5 square upon 5 minus x bar that is 10 square. So 9 equals x1 square, x2 square dot up to x5 square upon 5 minus 100. So x1 square x2 square plus dot up to x5 square equals 109 into 5. So it will be x1 square x2 square up to x5 square 109 uh, into 5 that is 545 I guess. So now new variance sigma dash equals to summation of new observation square that is x1 square x2 square plus dot up to x5 square plus minus 50 whole square divided by 6 minus new mean x bar dash whole square now we already find out x bar that x bar dash as 0 so sigma dash now the sum of 5 observations are 545 plus square of 50. So I guess it's 2500 upon 6. So it will be 45 and 30 upon 6. So the sigma dash, the new mean will be 5630 point because if I take the division of 3045 by 6, so 530 0040 that is 7, so 4230, so it's 507.5. That is your answer. So B is your answer. Right? So hope you understand it. Though it is based on a pure calculation, you can do it. Right? But you have to be quite careful because you have to do such things in a very short time. Okay? So don't get panic while solving such questions. Moving with the, moving with the next question. So in that, we have, a, we have to find out the length of code of the parable x bar equals 4 by having equation this. It's a simple case that maybe let us take this kind of parabola we have and this line can be something like this. So this length you have to find out. So what we'll do in this case, first of all, uh, you can get the point of intersection and then you find out the distance between them. That is the simplest way right now. Anyone can understand. So let's go with it. So let's make y subject from this. So it will be root 2y equals 4 root 2 plus x 
So it will be y equals x by root 2 plus 4. And then just put this value into the equation of parabola. So now it is x square equals 4 into x by root 2 plus 4. And x square equals it's 2 root 2x plus 16. Therefore, x square minus 2 root 2x minus 16 equals to 0. So as you want to find out the factors of it. So 16, factors of 16, so subtraction is minus 2 root 2. So that factor will be, if don't, then let's go with the minus b. Plus or minus root of b square. Minus 4 a and c divided by twice a so 2 root 2 plus or minus it's square of 2 root 2 that is 8 and plus 64 root of 8 plus 64 by 2 so 2 root 2 plus or minus 72 by 2 so 2 root 2 plus or minus 72 18 4 6 root 2 i guess right 6 root 2 by 2 so i can take 2 common and x equals uh, if we take 2 common then it will be 2 root 2 plus or minus 3 root 2 therefore we'll get x as root 2 plus 3 root 2 that is 4 root 2 or x equals 2 root 2 minus that is minus 2 root 2 so these are the values of x and for these values the points are if i put x equals 4 root 2 so put 4 root 2 here in this case put 4 root 2 so 4 root 2 by root 2 root 2 can say 4 plus 4 that is 8 and as i put minus 2 root 2 it will be 2 so these are the two points and therefore length of code is equals to root of 4 root 2 plus 2 root 2 whole square plus 8 minus 2 whole square. So it will be 6 root 2 whole square plus 6 whole square. So it's 36 into 2. It is 72 plus 36. So it will be 108 and 108 will be 36 into 3 right so it will be 36 into 3 and your answer is 6 root 3 that will be the length of the code it's quite easy again directly from the textbook just you need to understand that by taking the point of intersection between the line and the curve and whatever point of intersection we get that goes the distance between the points you have to find okay so hope you understand it's quite easy again okay. Moving with the next one, it is belongs to the uh, determinant. So let A is 2B, 1B, B square plus 1B and 1B2 and the minimum value of determinant of A by B have to find out. So let us first of all find out determinant of A. So it's 2B1, B, B square plus 1B and 1B2. So uh, either you can directly give the expansion or if you want to apply some process over that, then it's also okay. So let us apply the process that R2 to R2 minus B R1 and R3 to R3 minus R1. Hope it will get some benefit for us. So 2B1, it's B minus 2B that is minus B. B square, B square cancel, which is one and B minus B zero. <coughs> Similarly, 1 minus 2 that is minus 1, b minus b 0 and 2 minus 1 that is 1. So, right, we'll get some zeros and let us directly expand the determinant. So, 2 into 1 minus b into minus b plus 0 and plus 1 into 0 plus 1. So, therefore, determinant of a will be <coughs> it's 3 plus b square. Right? So now as we want to determinant of A by B, so it's 3 by B plus B, this will become the function. And this functions 
function has minimum value what that we have to find so now let us take f of b as b plus 3 by b let's go with its derivative so f dash of b equals 1 minus 3 by b square for maxima and minima f dash of b equals to 0 so 1 minus 3 by b square equals to 0 hence b square equals to 3 hence b equals to root 3 only because what we have to do we want the positive value of b that is root 3 is the only possible thing but we need to check that whether this will give us a minimum answer or not for that we have to do double derivative so root 3 the double derivative of this function will be 0 and plus 6 by b cube which is therefore f double dash of root 3 will be 6 by 3 root 3 whole cube we no matter with the answer it's only related with the sign positive therefore at b equals to root 3 function has minimum value and therefore minimum value of determinant of a by b is equals to 3 upon root 3 plus root 3 that is root 3 plus root 3 which is equals to 2 root 3 that is the answer we can say that it's a combination of determinant and the application of derivative right it is not necessary that you can find such condition by using the derivative only. if you have some other method from this particular point that it's 3 by b plus b if you have some other value that for any value of b which is greater than 0 if you can obtain such condition so you can do it right rather than using this method of derivative but as far as i concern it is quite easy to go with the derivative okay then moving with the next question it's again from the application of derivative that the tangent to the curve curve is given to us y equals x e raised to x square passing through the point 1 e also passing through the point dash so it's a pure textual equation a very simple thing let me first tell you the whole method what we're going to do is we first find out the derivative right we have a point 1 e so we can obtain the value of slope then we're going to find out the equation of tangent and then we'll put all the points one by one in the equation to check which we're going to satisfy it okay so let's go with the dy by dx first so keeping e raised to x square as it is x as derivative 1 plus keeping x as it is e raised to x square as derivative e raised to x square and x square as derivative 2x okay so it is e raised to x square common 1 plus 3x at 1 e point m equals dy by dx is equals to put x equals 1 so it is 4 e that will be the slope right because 3 into 1 1 3 plus 1 4 e raised to 1 so therefore equation of tangent will be y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 from this we can say that y minus e equals to 4e x minus 1 so y minus e equals to 4e x minus 4e hence it is 4e x minus y minus 3e equals to 0 so now just check one by one that which point will going to satisfy this right so as you put option 1 so as you take x equals 4 by 3 and y is 2e. So first option, 4 by 3 and 2e. So LHS will be 4e with 4 by 3 minus 2e minus 3. Okay, because we have to check that whether it is uh, possible or not. So it will be 16e by 3 and minus 5e. But I don't think that it will going to satisfy. Actually, I made a mistake in doing the derivative. Here is the mistake. I have to cancel out this. Sorry for that. Because 1 plus 3x square is not the slope. 
let me first cancel out this because it will not going to satisfy let me first cancel out this all because just check e raised to x square if i take common it will become 1 plus 2x square sorry for that So it is e raised to x square common, it's 1 plus 2x square. So at point 1e, m equals dy by dx equals 3e, that will be the slope. And therefore equation of tangent y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 which is y minus e equals 3e x minus 1 and y minus e 3e x minus 3e so 3e x minus y minus twice e equals to 0 this will be the equation of tangent now as we check the first option for 4 by 3 and 2e we will get lh as equals 3e into 4 by 3 minus 2e minus 2e which is 4e minus 2e minus 2 which is 0 and this point will going to satisfy the equation right and therefore tangent is passing through the point 4 by 3 and twice that will be the answer okay sure next question let's talk about so in this question the function is given from minus 1 to 1 f from minus 1 to 1 to r and fx is given as maximum of minus of modulus and minus of root 1 minus x square and k be the set of all the points where f is not differentiable then k has exactly dash now it is a very important kind of questions and you find such kind of questions frequently in the examination also right okay here what to do we have to find out the point of uh, the points where function is not differentiable Okay, now there are two types of methods to check whether function is differentiable or not. First, by just taking the uh, differentiation on different different points and to check whether left hand side and right hand side are equal or not. And the second and the most important method which will mainly you can use in the JEE that to plot the graphs. And by just plotting the graph, we can understand that which uh, where the point is function is not continuous or where the function has angle that is the corner points okay so first of all let us check the graph and the very important thing for us in this question is the domain domain is very uh, easy it is only between minus one to one easy in terms of what it has very lesser amount of uh, values right so interval is very small only in between minus one to one so uh, what will be the graph of modulus of minus x so the graph of modulus of minus x will be something like this surely Okay, and uh, minus of root 1 minus x square. Let me talk about this function only. So if I consider this as minus of root 1 minus x square. So if I'll do the square, it will be 1 minus x square. So it will be x square plus y square equals 1. But it's not a circle. It's not a pure circle. Okay, now just check. For any value of x, we'll get this. This 1 minus x square will give you only positive answer. But it will be in between what interval? In between only minus 1 to 1 so let me take this as minus 1 and this as plus 1 and in between minus 1 to 1 the circle behaving something like this here, here suppose minus 1 and here suppose 1 so the circle is something like this okay but right now y will always give us negative answers only this lower portion we have to keep in our mind so for that i can be like i can plot the function like this like this 
and as far as the point of intersections are concerned let me cancel out this because this information is just for the graph and for the point of intersection we can compare them so by doing the square we can take 2x square equals 1 so it will be x equals plus or minus 1 by root 2 so we can say that this point is minus 1 by root 2 and this point is 1 by root 2. Now what we have to check? We have to check in between minus 1 to 1 which one is the has greater value because uh, we have to take the maximum answer only between the two functions. Okay. So now just talk about before the uh, intersection up to minus 1. So in between this interval which one has greater value? Just check. Just check in between minus 1 to 1 which one has greater value? Let me remove this line for better understanding. Okay, so I'll just plot another graph over here. Here it is minus one, here it is minus one by root two, here it is one by root two, and here it is one. This is the line x equals zero. Now, as you can understand it, to plot the graph properly, just check. Now, from minus one to one by two, this is first graph and this is second graph. So which one has greater value? Compulsory root 1 minus x square has greater value because it has above the line. So we can plot the graph like this. Let me, let me write down all the numbers above the x-axis. So the graph will be something like this. Then after between minus 1 by root 2 to 0, this line is has greater value. So from this, we can have this kind of graph. Then again from 0 to 1 by root 2, this can be the graph. So it is something like this. And from here it is again like this. So now what you observed. Just a minute. So what you observed that we find here point of corner here also point of corner and here also point of corner so there are three corner points at which function is not differentiable and the points are s equals to minus 1 by root 2, 0 and 1 by root 2. These are the points where function is not differentiable. That is exactly three points are there. Okay. So first this graph shows the combined graph of mod x and minus root 1 minus x square. And this is the graph which is related with the question. Okay. So don't get confused. This is related with the answer. Okay, so hope you understand this session, right? If you find any query, if you any trouble, right? Any doubt, you can contact me on this number or you can write your doubts in the comment also. If you find it's kind of helpful uh, session, so you can just like it, share it and subscribe it for the further solution of this session. Okay, thank you from my side.